Let's frame the opportunity, Lisa. You know, the, the market reaction is very clear. But for AMD and the AI industry at large, what do you think this represents? Well, look, uh, this is a huge milestone for AMD. You know, we are so thrilled with the partnership with uh, the OpenAI team. And it's also, you know, a huge moment for the AI industry because, you know, when you get to the right down to it, you need more AI compute. I mean, that's where we are today. Compute is the foundation for all of the intelligence we can get from AI. And, you know, we are a compute provider. We have spent years on our roadmap. We've spent years working with OpenAI and, and the team. And, you know, together now we're embarking on, you know, a massive build out of six gigawatts of AI compute. And um, it's, it's a big deal for us, for our shareholders, for our teams, and for really, you know, the partnership and, and the overall AI ecosystem. Greg, I said that at the top, the focus is inference. I think that's really important to be specific about what you will do with this capacity. So, so literally explain that part. And I'm conscious that, you know, in the first instance, the first target is one gigawatt and then eventually six gigawatts. But what will you use it for? Well, I think that the world continues to underestimate the amount of demand for AI compute, right? That just we've seen this explosion of demand with things like ChatGPT. You know, we're at 800 million weekly active users now. This product didn't even exist three years ago. And we're in a position where we cannot launch features. We cannot launch new products simply because of lack of computational power. And we see these models continuing to get exponentially better. And I think we're just heading to a world where so much of the economy is going to be lifted up and driven by progress in AI. And so we're very much heading to a world by default that I think looks like a compute desert, right? That there's just not enough compute to go around. And so we're trying to build as much as possible, as quickly as possible. So we're starting with one gigawatt simply because you got to start somewhere. Right. Um, but honestly, we're building as fast as we possibly can and trying to bring as much computational power uh, to bear for the economy and for the world. Lisa, this is such a big commitment to instinct in particular. As a customer, does it make OpenAI the largest for that particular product? Well, this is certainly uh, the largest deployment that we have announced by far. I mean, you know, six gigawatts of compute. Um, as Greg said, we're going to start with the first gigawatt in the second half of 2026 on our uh, new uh, next generation uh, MI450 chip. Um, I think the thing to understand is, you know, these types of partnerships actually take you know, years to really get comfortable with the idea that we're going to, you know, go all in together. And this is an all in partnership uh, in terms of building out, uh, you know, the, the AI compute uh, that uh, OpenAI needs for everything that they're offering to the world. So, yes, it's a huge deal. And it, it also says a lot about, you know, how much needs to come together for, you know, this entire ecosystem to operate. So, you know, we are setting up, you know, certainly there's a lot of engineering work, uh, but our teams are working together on hardware, software, we're ensuring the supply chain, all of those elements are set up and ready to uh, deliver on this uh, massive commitment. Greg, talk us through a little bit about the players that you need to also lean on. This has been years in the making, as you say, with AMD, but what other cloud providers are involved? How are you thinking about this working with an Oracle or others out there? Yeah, we, we really think of this as an industry-wide effort. And in general, we think that compute is something that does require the entire supply chain to really wake up and to really uh, to start building much more than people were planning on. I think this starts from energy uh, to try to get far more uh, power to be built. Um, things like nuclear, I think, are going to be very important to come online. The cloud providers are an important part of this as well. So we're going to be deploying AMD in our own data centers. We'll be deploying them uh, together with, with cloud providers. You know, we have a deal with Oracle, uh, lots of other uh, cloud providers out there. You, you can really see that we're very much in the, we just want compute, as much compute as possible. We think this is important for the economy. We think this is important for the nation. We think this is important for humanity. Uh, and so really, we're working with everyone in this whole industry uh, in order to, to get as much compute power online as quickly as we can. Lisa, I'm sorry, specifics. Where is this data center going to be? Uh, is it one single site? Is it Oracle uh, that will partner with you on this? Well, I, actually, what this really is is an announcement of what you know, AMD and OpenAI are going to do together. Uh, you know, OpenAI has a lot of partners in terms of you know, where they deploy. Um, I imagine a lot of it will be in uh, cloud service providers. It's really up to um, you know, OpenAI and, and, and Greg and Sam and the team. Uh, but the, the way to think about it is um, for this you know, amount of compute, it's going to have to be in a lot of different places. I mean, it's, it's a massive amount. Multiple locations. Multiple words, locations. Right? Um, I would imagine you know, multiple uh, providers uh, to really get this online as fast as possible. Greg, there is a lot of focus on where OpenAI is going to get the money from to fund all of this. Sam Altman's big picture commitment 
is well documented, right? And, and the numbers, are in, to his mind, are in the trillions. But have you specifically thought about debt financing for this relationship with AMD? Have you thought about doing a specific equity raise? Um, you are very committed across multiple projects. Yeah, look, the way, that I would, <clears throat> the way that I would look at this is that AI revenue is growing faster than I think almost any product in history. And that ultimately, at the end of the day, the reason this compute power is so important, is so worthwhile for everyone to build, is because the revenue ultimately will be there. Now, as a company that is trying to move as fast as we can, we look at everything, right? We look at equity, debt, um, we look at trying to find creative ways of, of financing all of this. Um, that's been actually a huge focus of us for the past couple of years, is thinking about how can we possibly build the amount of compute that is required in order to really transform this whole economy into an AI-powered economy. And so I think you'll see lots of creative ideas, um, but fundamentally, I think at the end of the day, it is because we believe well, that- I'm sorry to jump there. in and interrupt, and Caro, just forgive me on this one. The condition uh, of AMD issuing the stock to OpenAI requires you to spend money, basically, because you have to deliver that gigawatt of capacity first. Uh, Lisa, I have to ask you if you, you have assurances that OpenAI is good for it. Well, uh, let me be clear. I mean, this deal is a win for AMD, it's a win for OpenAI, and it's a win for our shareholders. And, and that's kind of the way we put this together. Um, I have full confidence in you know, OpenAI, Sam, Greg, Sarah. I mean, this is a massive opportunity for us. Right now, right here, it's about who has the most compute and how fast can we get it online. And we're committing to doing this together. And the fact is, um, as OpenAI buys chips, that's great for AMD. Our revenue goes up, our earnings go up. Uh, you know, we expect that it will also be you know, very, very accretive uh, to, uh, to our shareholders from day one. And as we do that, you know, we're very happy to have OpenAI as a deep partner, and we win together. So it's like a virtuous, positive cycle in how we build out you know, this big vision for having all this compute out there. Right. And yet we still question, as you were just talking about, Greg, some of the other supply chain elements, you're talking about the need for nuclear, for power. What's really interesting is we, are you feeling confident enough about the rest of the compute, the supply chain is there? Is this going to be U.S. manufactured from your perspective? Or are you looking at also building out internationally with AMD? Yeah, we've, we've been looking at really all options. Uh, our, our preference and, and really the, the core thing that we try to do is build as much as possible in the U.S. And you can see the commitments that we've made over the past year, you know, $500 billion of investment in the U.S. And that's not stopping. We're continuing to, to build. I do think that international, I, that there, it is also going to be important for the world to have compute. Uh, I think that compute is going to become this like national security strategic resource and every country is going to need computational power. And so uh, that we are really not limiting our, our sort of sites in terms of where, where to build, but we do think it is important that the U.S. leads in this technology, leads in computational power, and we're expanding the supply chain. Uh, but you can see that we've really been working with partners across the globe in order to, to actually meet the demand that we expect to be coming in upcoming years. Lisa, the manufacturing of these chips... Will you look to Intel at all for it, do you think, in the future? Well, um, as you know, the supply chain is something that we work on, um, you know, very, uh, very uh, meticulously. I think we have a very strong supply chain. Uh, we're certainly deeply partnered with, you know, TSMC across the supply chain. Uh, you know, just to that um, earlier question, uh, we're absolutely prioritizing building in the United States because uh, I think that's super important. This is the, um, the U.S. AI stack. We want to have as much of it in the U.S. as possible. And, you know, we continue to really look at, you know, how do we ensure that there will be a strong supply chain, you know, going forward. Greg, Sam posted on X that this deal with AMD is incremental to what's already being done with NVIDIA. But I've, as Lisa knows, I've spent quite a lot of time looking at the MI family and, and the newer generations of products to come. Is there a very clear, specific benefit to using AMD technology for inference relative to the capabilities of NVIDIA? Or do you just see it broadly as some sort of diversifying factor? Well, I would look at it this way, that there's a huge fixed cost to getting AI models running on any platform. And so that when we look at, at what's out there, uh, that actually getting AI training to work is, is a huge, huge amount of lift. Uh, that's something we've really only done the work for NVIDIA. Um, but for inference, that that's something that's much more, uh, that there's an easier barrier to entry there. And one thing we found 
is that I, I think that the work that Lisa and team have been doing on the MI450 series, I, it's looking like it's going to be a really incredible chip. I think that, that there's the way that these things work is that there's niches for uh, different balances of memory and, uh, and computational power. And so as we have a diversity of workloads, we're finding that having a diversity of chips also really accelerates what we're able to do. Lisa, at the beginning of this conversation, I said there are both operational and financial milestones to be met. And, and Greg explained, you've got to start somewhere. So in the first instance, one gigawatt. But would you just sort of draw out the pathway to that first gigawatt? Um, you know, it seems like you're prepared to move quickly here. Yeah, absolutely. And, and maybe, Ed, if I can just build on something that, that Greg said. Um, I think he's absolutely right. You know, we're a believer in um, there's a diversity of workloads, and there will be a diversity of workloads across, you know, customers, models, um, use cases. And from that standpoint, uh, you know, we feel really good about how we're positioned. You know, we, we love the work here because, uh, you know, frankly, um, you know, OpenAI is the ultimate power user of our chips and, and, and tests us in very good ways. So um, I think that's, that's what gives us confidence that, you know, the technology is there. And then to your point about milestones, yes, I mean, this is, um, you know, clearly a case where uh, we are um, tied to each other. Uh, the first gigawatt of deployment is super important. We're going to start that, um, you know, second half of next year, mm. and we're going to build on from there. And uh, it really is uh, not just the technology, but, you know, commercial milestones, adoption milestones, and, and just how we proliferate the capability going forward. But I'm looking forward to building this as fast as possible. You know, we're already working with a number of uh, cloud service providers uh, who are also very active on our technology. And I think this is a, a great catalyst to get the industry to build faster tied to each other is such an interesting turn of phrase. And Greg, look, you are seeing more AI users and chip makers and designers becoming more financially tied to each other. Is this going to continue? Is this the step forward for how you see this financing going forward? Well, I really see the world transitioning to this AI-powered economy. And the interesting thing is within OpenAI that we've really seen what it's like when your progress is limited and accelerated as two sides of the coin by, comp by comp computational power. Like teams within OpenAI that their ability to deliver really is tied to the amount of compute that they get. And I think we're heading to a world where that is how the whole economy will function. And we're starting to see it, right? That, that people having access to better AI tools, if you're a coder, you're able to do far more if you have access to better, uh, to better AI models. And we're heading to a world where if you can have 10 times as much AI power behind you, you will probably be 10 times more productive. And so I think that we're moving to a world where the whole industry is waking up to the fact that we have just not planned. We have not planned for this moment where this explosion in, in AI demand is happening. So it's happening all the way from the power to the silicon. And I think this whole industry has to find a way to actually rise to meet the occasion. Lisa, you have given us a look into the future before about how you see the total addressable market, the industry. Now that the ink is dry with OpenAI and Greg, are you rethinking either your bigger picture analysis of the market for AI accelerators and GPUs, or do you see AMD now having an improved position in that market relative, of course, to your friends at NVIDIA? Well, again, I think, um, and I've told you before, I believe that this is a huge market. Um, you know, we have size, just the AI accelerator um, TAM being you know, over $500 billion in TAM over the next uh, few years. I think some might say, you know, maybe I was a little conservative in that TAM analysis. Uh, but the way to think about it is there's so much need from compute. I mean, you just heard it from Greg. So you know, this is a huge pie, and uh, you're going to see the need for you know, more players coming into it. And you know, from my standpoint, um, uh, this is a, a big validation of our technology and our capability. Uh, you know, as much as we love the work with OpenAI, we're working with a lot of other uh, customers as well. There's a lot of excitement in the industry around MI450, so we're ready for it. 